Yo, what is going on everybody? Uh, so this week is Necrotic Week, so I want to come at you with some Brewmasters tips and tricks uh, to get you through Necrotic Week. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications, that way you get notified every time I go live with new Brewmaster info. Uh, so, first things first, Necrotic, how does it work? So what happens is anytime you're attacked with a melee attack or a ranged physical attack, uh, such as like the attacks that the Deadeyes do in Iron Docks, it's going to apply a stacking uh, magic ability to you that does damage to you and reduces the healing that you take. Uh, as you approach like 40 stacks, it's going to mean you're going to take basically no healing from direct healing. Now, this doesn't apply to absorbs, so that's, that's good. So, looking at the Mykonos Soulbind, you're going to want to make some adjustments. Normally, uh, you might play on the top left with a potency conduit and forge light filter, which makes it so that your file uh, will proc when you hit 35% health. Now, since Necrotic's a magic ability, you want your file in your control. You don't want it just procking whenever. Uh, so because of this, you're going to shift to the top right here. Uh, I recommend having the defensive conduit for fortifying ingredients. It just puts an extra absorb shield on your fort brew um, and then also you get where when you use file it's going to knock things away but what we're really looking for here is for file to not activate on its own because you want to control when it's removing those stacks and not something else that you might have that can be helpful um, but you might not have is shard of aegis the trinket um, this works as an absorb so it negates all of your stacks of necrotic as that ticking damage and it also stops your stagger from hitting you for eight seconds which can be helpful and then if you're a dwarf you'll have access to stone form which also removes necrotic so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like in a live key so this is just an 18 uh gambit on necrotic and spiteful week uh, just so i can show you what these pulls look like so you'll notice right away uh with you do these big pulls like this your stacks just immediately shoot up because all the times you're getting meleeed so i went ahead and activated my shield of aegis just to uh, again keep my health stable keep it up high and to reduce the damage from stagger and necrotic now as these are dying i'm trying to get away i'm noticing i'm not actually gonna get away the stacks are about to refresh so i just go ahead and pop my file uh, this keeps me from getting any more stacks it just removes them completely obviously uh, it also knocks things away which just gives me like an extra second to get some healing from my healer uh, once that's done now file the downside about this is that it's on a five minute cooldown uh, the other downside is that the cooldown stays on cooldown as long as you're in in combat and doesn't actually start recharging until you leave combat that's a problem because of spiteful being this week because you're probably not going to lose combat because they're up for like 10 seconds so just be aware you might not have file as much as you need it so with this next pack i'm going in here knowing i'm not going to have it as soon as my stacks get high and i'm starting to lose health i'm just going to go ahead and use a little bit of movement some good old-fashioned kiting so the nice thing about chi torpedo is you can use it once to get mostly away to where they can't get to you in this case these mobs do jump so as soon as i see them jump i chi torpedo again Again, you could use roll if you use roll, that's fine. Um, but that keeps me from getting those additional stacks when they would land on me. So as soon as uh, my stacks drop off, I can go straight into the next pack. Um, and again, be aware you're going to take some stacks pretty quick because there's lots of melee on you. I can see now that my stacks are pretty high. My Aegis just came off cooldown, so I'm going to use that to again prevent damage. My stacks will keep going up, but I'm not going to take any damage. And as soon as this ends, I'm going to ring a piece, and I'm just going to stand in the middle of the ring a piece until my stacks drop off. Something you might know, not know about Necrotic, after the last application of the dot goes on you, it lasts for five seconds, and as long as it's not reapplied, it'll fall off, and then your stacks reset. Ring a piece lasts six seconds. So, as long as you ring a piece and stand in the center of your ring a piece and there's no like weird, you know, physical attackers that can do ranged abilities like in Iron Docks, then you won't get hit by anything. And as long as your stagger doesn't kill you, that's the key there, right? Because stagger can still does damage. As long as your stagger doesn't kill you, you'll be safe and your stacks will drop off and then you can go back to pulling. So in this next pull, I know that I once again Ring a piece, it's a super short cooldown, so you have it pretty often. Uh, I've got that ready if I need it. I've also got Cell Brew, and I'm just going to kind of monitor my stacks here.
Now, as soon as I start taking damage, you can see I, I popped Selbrew. It did go off pretty quickly. Um, I'm feeling like I, I should be okay. These things start to flee, so I, I kind of hold off on clearing stacks. And then you can see I get really low and I panic, but that's what she torpedoes for. Now, here, you do want to be careful because obviously you can still die from stagger, right? You see how low I got there. Um, but I was able to get away before uh, my health got too low. I was just watching my health ready to use stone form in case I needed it. Uh, luckily, the priest gave me guardian spirit, so I was safe to just let it tick. Um, but as soon as the stacks dropped off, I used my healing pot. You don't want a healing pot before the stacks fall off because, again, you're taking reduced healing, and that includes your healing pot and health stones. So once the stacks fall off, if your health's low like that, then health stone or health pot to bring your health back up to safe levels. Now, this next pack here, again, it's another large pack. Here's the nice thing about Shield of Aegis, again, if, if you have it. Um, you know, it's only a minute and a half cooldown, so you have it up pretty regularly that you can use it to, like, save yourself from taking the damage of Necrotic and your Stagger. Um, so here, I'm just kind of watching, ready to use it in case I need it. But I also know that I have Ring of Peace, so I'm going to go ahead and use Ring of Peace there because I saw things got away. I'm just going to knock them away, stay in the center. And there, since I've already got the ring down, you'll notice that even though my stacks fell off, I just stayed in it. Again, if they can't apply the stacks to you, like you're not going to take extra damage. So still had threat, safe to just stand in the ring and, and just kind of let it go from there. Now, I was able to leave combat in between uh, the packs earlier, so you can see my file did start coming off cooldown. I didn't have to use my stone form earlier, so that's back up, and once again, Shield of Aegis is back up. So, again, if you don't have this trinket and you still have a dinar left, please use the dinar to buy a Shield of Aegis. Now, here's the thing that you got to watch for. I used Shield of Aegis, and I was getting ready to prevent damage, and then I was going to stone form, uh, but my priest panicked, and he gripped me. That's something you need to watch out for. Sometimes your healer will try with best intentions, but he can try to kill you. I was, you know, kind of safe, and then I was just going to wait to stone form it. He pulled me, and I kind of, like, was like, okay, well, I guess I'll just wait uh, and see if this goes off. And then I put down a ring, and it was scary, but I survived. You can see I did use Fort Brew there, because when I got super low, I was afraid that I was going to die. Uh, he didn't have GS ready, so I just used Fort Brew to give myself that extra shield with fortifying ingredients. Again, it gives you 15% of your max health as a shield, which again, is an absorb and uh, blocks that damage. Now on this one, uh, you can see my stacks are going up again, but file is ready. So uh, I know I'm not going to need file or stone form for the next little while when it comes to the next mob. So uh, once my stacks get high, I'm about half health here. Boom, I just go ahead, activate my file, removes all the stacks, knocks things back, and then continue with the pull. So, the next pool in this dungeon, uh, some mobs don't have a super high attack speed. So, the next three mobs don't have a, a high attack speed, and you're not actually going to get necrotic stacks high. Uh, they'll generally, like, reset before you even get to, like, 10. Um, and something else to know is that the shrouded affix mobs, so this mini boss, and then the other shrouded mobs, they don't apply necrotic. So, even though you're like, well, if I bring a piece, they're going to come through it, those mobs do not apply necrotic. Um, that's specifically the shrouded ones. You do have to be careful if you have any like elites, uh, such as like the champions that are walking around the beginning of Iron Docks. Those ones are elites. They are not affected by CC in any way, so they will come through and they will apply necrotic. So just watch out for that. Now, there is one more ability that I didn't talk about that we have that can help with necrotic week, and that is transcendence. Now, this is something that you have to set up and kind of plan ahead. You can see I just placed mine there for this pack. Um, it's something you kind of have to plan ahead and be ready to use. I know that this pack, it's got uh, the deck hands, so I'm most likely going to use leg sweep and ring a piece to like stop them from getting Super Saiyan off. Uh, so because of that, uh, I want to have this plan of escape that I can use that keeps me away from the other mobs in here, um, but also allows me to drop my stacks safely. So here you can see I am using Ring of Peace. I just used my Shield of Ages to stop me when I got kind of low there, even though my stacks weren't high. I did drop Ring of Peace to stop Super Saiyan, and then I kind of stayed in there to let my stacks reset. Um, but this pack, I did double pull here, and that takes a little bit longer, so you can see here that my stacks are getting pretty high again. Uh, so here I'm just going to start slowly kiting away, and then I'm going to just transcend to get away to safety. Uh, 
the pros of using this is that it does get you 40 yards if you plan it and use it correctly, uh, and then you still have access to either roll or cheat torpedo to get towards the next group and, and pull right away. So uh, it's not something that I normally use as much in a dungeon, but it is something that if I know I'm going to need some room to kite, or I just want to have a safe path that I can set up ahead of time that I'm going to be backtracking through that I will put up just to have as an extra uh, thing to use. So those are basically all the skills that we have to take care of Necrotic. Um, so if you have any questions about how to deal with like a situation in a certain dungeon, definitely let me know uh, in the comments and I'll kind of give you tips and tricks on what I've used for specific dungeons. Um, but I thought that this one gave me a good way to showcase all the different abilities that we have uh, with using this in Gambit. So please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you are notified anytime I post new Brewmaster content. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. See you guys.